Hi there, and welcome to the Makers Tech U Member Spotlight Series. I'm Robin Marie Smith, and I am with a special guest today, Patty Fisher. Patty is a mixed media artist who was born and raised in Northern California, and she now lives in Austin, Texas. Hopefully one day I'm going to get out to Austin. I've never been there. Now, Patty is a self-taught artist, and she actually kind of started doing art in the 1990s as a result of writer's block. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Patty has a literature degree from San Francisco State University. So I guess you could say that Patty is an artist who enjoys writing and a writer who enjoys art. Welcome, Patty. It's great to have you with us. Hey, Robin Marie. It's so good to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's uh, it's good to have you. I know we've, golly, I, I don't know exactly where our first touch point was, but I feel like you've been in my life for a good while. So in this social world, I'm like, I don't remember when that first point was. You just kind Actually, of- Actually, talking- um, you were so kind and generous. It was about four years ago, three and a half, four years ago, right after we moved to Austin, I was looking to move my work forward. And you gave me about a half hour worth of your time. And you just, we just oh. on FaceTime and. Oh my gosh. We'll see that. You were so supportive. And then that's how I heard about Makers Tech You and I was one okay. of your people and that's how it started. Oh, well, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. I was trying to remember. And I'm like, cause sometimes I'll hear, Oh, it was this or that. And, it, and so, and I remember, um, I wasn't sure how long you had been in Austin. Actually, there's several artists, creatives that are, that I'm, that I know in Austin. So if I ever get to make it there, we could have this like big, you know, get together, I hope. Cause there's, so, I know, I know it. I know it. So, so let's, let's start a little bit with your, um, how you describe your artistic style. Cause I know there's a few things you've been working on or that you're going to be working on that are kind of new. Um, and I want to hear a little bit about that, but how would you describe that to somebody if they were to ask you? Um, I'm very experimental in what I do. Um, my passion is learning different, um, methods of creating and, with different media. So whatever I can do to kind of put that together and it usually comes out in art or in art, in um, abstract. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I love the study of color, um, but I do it very intuitively. I've never studied color theory. Um, I love collage, um, line. I love faces. I mean, just so many things, but um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, um, I have a problem with taking like little mini classes and <laughs> so, but anyway, it's, it's just, I enjoy the process so much and I do not care if it is ugly. <laughs> I just love it. It's part of the process. Right. And I guess, yeah, 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 you know, I think we all, well, we don't all, but I think at least I know I do. It's like, okay, I, I don't really want people to know there's ugly art. But there's lots of ugly art and there's lots of things that, you know, you're like, oh, OK, that's not that's not cutting it. And I think there's times when you're just maybe you're in a time where that's all it seems to be that you're doing. And maybe it's like you said, let's experiment with something different. Let's let's look at maybe you're trying too hard or being too hard on yourself in that. So let's maybe look at something different and try something new. So but your work is very diverse. I mean, when I look at your website and I see your work. It is like like you were saying with the faces and abstract, it's, it's a, it's very diverse. And you, um, you're going to be working with um, Venetian plaster. Is that correct? Venetian. Tell me about that. I'm curious about, and where did that come up from? Mm. Um, I don't even remember. Someone I knew once had a ceiling done in Venetian plaster and it was just beautiful. And I've tried using like joint compound and it's just too rough. Um, and, you know, texture paste is too expensive. And so I bought a big thing of Venetian plaster and I'm, like, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to do something with this. And it's like the difference between joint compound and Venetian plaster is like um, scratchy wool and just beautiful silk. Oh. It has the consistency of that, that marshmallow you get in a jar. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's almost like whipped uh, marshmallow and it spreads on beautifully and it has a very, um, very soft finish. You can polish it to a shine. It's just, it's, and it cracks. Like if you put it on um, canvas, 
It wow. does kind of full cracking, but it doesn't fall apart. Oh, nice. So I don't know if I could use it as gesso uh, in, in place of gesso, probably. And yeah. I, I, it take, I put it over gesso. Does it take long to dry? Is it a quick dry? No, or? not really. Day, maybe. Oh, okay. you know, I put it on with a, a putty knife or a oh. trowel oh. and, uh, and then I paint over it, but you can make it bumpy. You can make it yeah. Yeah. smooth. You can sand it very easily. So um, yeah, you can color it. I've, I've put um, powdered milk uh, paint, you know, the pigment yes. mm -hmm. and, um, and it takes it really well. So it's fun. Everything's Experiment. Maybe I should have been a scientist. I don't know. I just, really, I just don't like measuring things. So I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like that kind of like the chemist, you know, where you're like, all right, what do I, you know, I mix this with that and that with that. Yeah. Or, or you could even say in the kitchen being, a, you know, when you're cooking, although for me, that's not, I have to measure everything. And even when I do that, it's like, why didn't that come out? Right. I know I measured everything. Right. But oh, well, so, and you're doing some dyeing of fabrics too. Tell us a little bit about mm -hmm. that. Um, I've done some beet dye. I've dyed some paper with beets and I love that, that color, that, that it's almost like a creamy pink. It's just so beautiful. And then I did rust dyeing and, um, I've got rust dye all over the side of my house, oh. <laughs> over my, my balcony. Um, but it's fun. I love like putting little nails and things and letting the nails rust in the, in the fabric. And, um, and then just the lines and the, the accidents that you get, the, right. yeah, like nature's painting and then you can paint over it, you can stitch over it or whatever. Yeah. So absolutely. And I love have different paint. projects going on at the same time. Like, like you would be working with maybe the dyeing of the fabric and then you have maybe another station where you're working on something else. Or do you like focus on just that one thing at one time? One at a time. I, you know, I had a, my bin of, uh, of rust dye outside for two weeks and I was just letting it sit and I would just throw things in it or I'd wrap something around a, a rusty can and stick it in, leave it there for a while. I've got something buried. You know, I like to, I like to, to Ooh. push fabric to the limit. I like to pull the strings. I like, you know, yeah. and I'm, you know, that's, it's sort of like, um, I'm just revving my engine on that. I'm not ready to switch 100%. Yeah, you know, I think acrylic painting is probably my favorite okay. thing to do. But um, one thing always leads into another. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if I can walk into my studio and have like several things um, in in mid pro process, I always have a place to start. So I don't sit here going, "Oh gosh, exactly." I yeah, we're walk yeah. and I can't do anything. <laughs> I will do something. I will write. I will clean a clean a shelf. I'll do something, and then I'll see a piece of paper I'd forgotten about has a cool mark on it, and then there I go. So, yeah, it just show up. I show up for work every day. Yeah, that's awesome. And I know, I know that you've said you're like, unless you're traveling, you're like six days a week. I'm in here. Is it a full day? Is what does that look like, or is it just you know however much time you feel like spending in there? Some days it's a full day. I have a little, a little girl that I look after two days a week. So I guess for right now, I'm actually only in my studio five days a week, mm -hmm. but with her, we do art. So oh, same thing. There you go. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. But, um, okay. What was the question again? <laughs> no, I was just saying, you know, that you, you, you have committed to being in there and, and showing up. And that's something that really, even if you're not maybe feeling like it, or you're not sure what you're going to do, the fact that you do just things will happen and that you will be, mm -hmm. oh, you'll go from here. And then an idea comes up. It's amazing. I think how that happens where you're feeling like, yeah, you don't have any idea what I want to do, but then you just go in there, start touching and moving and playing and doing, and then boom, an idea pops up and you're just like, where did that come from? You know, if I hadn't come in here and started doing something, that idea probably would have never come to me. You know, and I love when that happens because I, yeah, to me, it's, it's such a deep thing. You know, it's, it's, um, it's that belief or that knowing that, that not everything can be seen, you know, I mean, things come from mm -hmm. who knows where, right. you know, our, our, our deepest self, our history, sure. we have so much when people say they they can't draw or they're not an artist. 
we have so much to draw on in so many different ways to express ourselves and it's all really beautiful. So, well, I want to talk a little bit about your beginning, but this, I want to ask you next about the work that you do with the kids, because what you just said there, I think is probably exactly what you expressed to those kids, because there's some point in our life. And I remember the point in my life where I realized I can't, I'm not creative, even though I thought I was before that, there's that thing that happens. We, not everyone, but we reach that point where we're like, well, I can't do this or I can't draw and I can't do that. And then you just kind of abandon that spirit of just creating and making and loving it like we did when we were kids. So tell me about that work that you're doing. These are private sessions, right? With kids that you work yes. with. Yeah. Tell me about yeah. that. I know our, our listeners and our viewers will be very interested in hearing about this. I, first of all, I am not a trained teacher. I do not have lesson plans. <laughs> okay. And I started when, when we moved to Austin, um, I had been a, a personal assistant in San Francisco, um, but I just wasn't finding work here. And I'm like, I want to do something. So I like kids, you know, I've, I've nannied off and on my whole life. I've for, you know, two natural and two um, stepdaughters of my own, my heart. Um, so I took a job with the school district uh, here in Austin as a um, teacher's aide assistant, a TA. And I worked with kids who, you know, maybe they had dyslexia or um, they were ADHD or just they learned differently, you know, you know, energy issues, whatever. And I was sitting in this one classroom one day and there were six or seven kids. It was a small language arts class. And I noticed that during free time, um, there, there, there was one thing they all wanted to do. They could do anything they wanted. And they all, as soon as the, the teacher said it's free time, they all ran to the art supplies. And I'm like, wow, these kids need to be in court. This needs to be incorporated more in their lives. Um, mm -hmm. There are still two students from that class that I work with oh, wow. who are in middle school now. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's, I just decided I would do a summer, a summer program. And I, I put it out there. The teacher gave me the, the email addresses to the parents and okay. I reached out to them and said, this, is this something you might be interested in? And that summer I had five of the kids, five, seven of those kids. Wow. And they all loved it. Oh. And I have seen them go. I've seen one, one student go from, you know, didn't know what to do. And he would just paint his hand mm. you know it's like it's okay you know here I am I'm a mixed media artist I have just about anything like any toy they could want to play with and and you know maybe it's overwhelming you know so he did that and now from memory he paints fish they're just absolutely beautiful in in acrylics and you know I help him mix the paints and I'm kind of his assistant and these pieces are really beautiful. And then afterwards he'll say, you know, I let's pull it up and see a picture and see how I did. Oh, and it's pretty amazing. Wow. So yeah. he's not, you said from memory. So he's not using a reference. No, no. Oh. no reference. He loves to fit. And I have another student who um, has a little rat named Ratty. And um, he has been building uh, for Ratty. I guess, I think the attic of his garage is like a city oh, for wow. this. Wow. We, started, we started with cardboard boxes and he would build like a theater with, and he's, he's going to be an engineer or something. Oh really. my, okay. He like would build a, a curtain that you had a pulley and it would open and, you know, the seats would fold up and fold down. And it was pretty amazing. Um, you know, and then we did, it's on my website, the little campsite that he did in the story, like they'll do something and I'll write the story as they're making it, um, as they're telling me. Mm -hmm. And now he's working with wood. Um, I just got a new drill, some new drill bits. And oh, wow. uh, I go to the creative reuse center here and just get just big bins of wood and pieces of flooring and tile and what, whatever. And he, 
you know, he's just, he's just amazing. Wow. Um, I have very young children, you know, who come in and I'm learning that you can't say, oh, you can do whatever you want because they need more, more restrooms. <laughs> Got a couple I've worked with that are one five and one seven, um, but they they do amazing things too, mm. just amazing. So anyway, it's I learn from them. Yeah. Now, do you just do this during the summer, or has it expanded where you're doing it on a regular throughout the year? Or? I do all year. Um, I'll do after school, I have one student who only goes half day, so she he comes um, uh, Wednesday afternoons and. Um, early. So yeah, they just, anytime, you know, anytime. And it's all been word of mouth and I hope to have more students because, um, not everybody's cut out for sports. You know, some of the kids, they like sports, but they also need that balance. And some kids just don't like anything other than art. They just love creating. And they, and you can see them just thrive and that just, and I was one of those kids where, it give, you know, the opportunity I would have, you know, that, and I loved to, um, I mean, back then things were a little bit different, but I really enjoyed, uh, the, the collage, I guess you would say where you're, you're cutting things out and you're creating things. And it was just like that whole process of taking these things that are just all of these things. And then you make something, I mean, my, whenever I would go to camp, you'd find me in the craft hut. That was where I was at. And I remember um, I've made so many things over the years. I mean, when you're a kid, you make kid things, but I made these sunflower seed earrings and necklace for my mom. She kept them. I think she still has them. Um, I was so proud of those, like just, or, you know, you're making paper beads or whatever it is. And you just really, I I was one of those kids. I just thrived on that. That's I wanted to learn everything. Like just whatever thing was, I wanted to learn how to do it. So I think what you're doing is amazing. And helping those kids see like the young man doing from memory, the fish and wow, he, I did that. And now where will that lead? You know, and who knows what that, but the confidence building that that comes, what comes with that for them. Yeah. And then, and the fact that it is something that I think it's, it's not something that has to be processed consciously. It comes very Mm -hmm. um, unconsciously to them. And um, I can tell by the smiles on the parents' faces that there's something that happens that maybe there's a magic that I don't see, mm. but I see plenty here. You know, I see plenty in my little studio. Yeah. That's my, awesome. my little five-year-old was here the other day and he, he looked at my, my rug. I don't know if you can see, I have like an old Persian okay. rug in here. Uh-huh. And he looked at the rug and he said, you know, Miss Patty, this rug is going to be more beautiful. The more paint it gets on it. Oh, oh. And I said, you know, you're right. <laughs> Is. what a thing to say oh my gosh I love awesome. that perspective so anyway, I could go I mean literally I could just I could talk about my students for hours I love I, them so I can tell that they mean a lot to you and you yeah just, you just light up when you talk about that so that's awesome that's great um I I've tried to do some things like that with kids but I I, I do better with teenagers that's my my group um but the little you know getting finding like there's a young girl at church now where I've gotten her she's just discovering art journaling and she's so excited I mean it's just we I had her come over and we made paper we made a journal and I mean I just I loved it but the little kids are harder for me because I'm not used to so awesome that there are wonderful creatives like you that are out there helping them to kind of you know learn and move forward in that so but I um, really believe I've got some students that are going to be I mean, I can see their future, you know, like through what they do, they're going to be so creative and so happy in their work. I just, Mm, I love hearing that. Yeah. That's, and oftentimes those are programs that are cut and are not left in schools. And it's really sad, you know, because I remember, man, my eighth grade art teacher, I just adored her. She introduced us to so many things. It was just like, wow, like, wow, I can do that. And there's this, and it's just, it's so important. So I think that's, it is, it is. You would have been a good student for me. I'm sorry that I'm sorry. You're so old. (laughs) Oh, I know I'm too old to be one now, but yeah, well, so let's start. I want to, I want to backtrack to the very beginning. Uh, let's, we'll say the 1990s, as we said in the introduction, because you, you are a writer and it was writer's block that led you to the creative process and creating art. So tell us a little bit about that. 
Um, it was a really actually very difficult time in my life. Uh, my mother, who had been living with us, gosh, I had lived with my mother all but one year of my life. We were really close. I don't have any siblings. She was a single mom. And, um, so she, she had Alzheimer's and, um, and it was, it was really tearing me apart seeing it every single day. I mean, it's, it's a really difficult, um, disease. It's heinous. It's, it's boy, some people handle it with their parents a lot better than others. I had a really hard time, even though I loved her so much. (laughs) Um, so I hired somebody to to be with mom. Actually, mom hired someone to be with her during the day. And um, while the kids were at school, this lady would come and she would make sure my mom didn't get lost or hurt herself. And um, my hairdresser and and now my really good friend um, said, you can use, you can use my kitchen table. Cause I was telling her, I got to have a place to go to, to write because I'm so short circuited at home. And, um, so I was there on his kitchen table, he would go to work and an hour later I would show up, you know, it's like, we, we never really saw each other, but Mm -hmm. I had that space. And, um, and then I started, uh, drawing because nothing was coming to me. It's just like, okay, I've got this space and I'm, I'm like paying rent, you know, I'm literally paying like $50 a month or something. I can't remember what it was and nothing happened. So I started sketching and school terrified me. I didn't get my degree till I was in my mid fifties. Um, so I called the local art school and I got a tutor. I hired a tutor to come and he would come every week or two and just kind of give me some basic, like pers- what perspective is and what my starter colors should be, you know, things like that. Um, and I worked with him for, I don't know, maybe a year, two years. Mm-hmm. Um, then not long after I was renting this table, <laughs> my, when my friends from high school, her father had a little cottage behind his house um, that was coming up, that was going to be available. And Robin Ray, it was so cute. It was like this shingled little cottage from a fairy book, from a fairy story. And it had grapevines growing up a trellis on, trellis on the side. And um, oh. it was just a room with a sink, you know, and like a mini kitchen and a bathroom and I just kind of made it my little space and I could I felt comfortable taking naps there when I couldn't sleep at night because I was worried about my mom anyway um I put up an easel and I just started painting and um when my when my marriage uh ended um I you know I had to move into an apartment I moved to San Francisco and I got all I could afford was a one bedroom condo. Mm -hmm. And so my art kind of went on the back burner for a while. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, then it's always been some kind of a catastrophe thing that's gotten me back into it. Mm -hmm. Um, My youngest um, stepdaughter was having some medical issues and I was, I started doing art again when she was in the hospital and um, I would sit at the bedside and do whatever. And um, then it was, it moved to, I did a Jane Davenport class and I don't know, she's a really good teacher. You know, I, my style is really different now, but um, I started drawing faces and during a time which could be a little bit lonely, um, I didn't feel lonely. Mm. And, you know, I just, I had my little corner of the bedroom and then my husband had another corner of the bedroom that he, where he had his drums. <laughs> <laughs> and then we moved to Austin and I got a whole room and he has a whole room for his music and everything's wonderful. So, yeah. um, anyway, that's, that's a kind of an overview of do you still do much writing and what type of writing do you do? Um, I, I'm not doing a ton of writing right now. I'm, I'm, just, I'm kind of doing a lot of reading right now and I am making notes. Okay. Um, I'm reading the, uh, creative habit. Twilight Tharp. Yeah. Uh, and just, I find, you know, I just make notes and I went through as a literature major, mm-hmm. <laughs> I went through a spell of years without reading. I was mm-hmm. just making art. Okay. And now I feel the call to go back to, to reading 
and um, writing my notes. And sometimes I do my morning pages, mm. sometimes I don't. Yeah. Um, when I come into my studio, I always have a notebook. If I don't feel compelled to write or to, to paint or make something, I start writing. Okay. It's just one, but I'm not writing like serious stories or, mm-hmm. or anything. I used to write a lot of poetry and um, I haven't been writing really much of anything that I'd want anybody to read, but just, I have many, many, many journals <laughs> that I have over my life. There you go for you. And that's okay. Yeah. 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 Great. Well, so playing into that, that how your creative journey has changed. Um, tell us a little bit about, is it Ephraim Grubstick? Ephraim Grubstick. Ephraim. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. I did. Um, I, he came to me when I was doing a work, a writing workshop with J. Ruth Gindler, who has, who wrote um, uh, Qualities, the book of Qualities. I don't know if anybody knows that, but it's a sweet, precious, precious book. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's J. Ruth Gendler, everybody. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's been translated into a lot of languages and it's been around for a while. But anyway, so I took a, a writing, several writing workshops. Ruth and I have become really good friends over the years. And uh, I was having so much criticism sitting, like, sitting on my shoulder. And I thought, okay, who is this? And this character came to be, Ephraim Grubstick. And he was, boy... Nothing I could do is good enough for Ephraim. But I found that if I could like personify him, like really make him into a person, I could, I could talk him down. I mean, I could really, I could take him down and uh, it helped me get rid of that, that critic. And now I really don't care if people like my work or not. I enjoy making it. And I am so happy when someone does like it. Mm -hmm. But if they don't, it's okay if it's not their thing. I don't care. It's it's not going to hurt my feelings. Yeah. And that's a good place to be because I'm telling you, it is, there's a big hole that a lot of us fall into and it's paral- it paralyzes you. Yeah. So. And, and I, I just absolutely love that. I mean, that really does play into your, your writing and your skill to come up with that. But what a great way to be like, mm, yeah, I'm putting you in the corner. Like, I'm not listening to you to, you know, really, like you said, to personify that into like, where you can talk to them, like, no, nope, not happening. Go away. You know, yeah. but it, 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 and I think too, and I've, I've had this conversation with some of the other members too, where we talk about social media and how you know, there's good things about it. And then there's not so good things about it and how that in some ways I think has caused us and people to kind of fall into that hole where it's like, it's easy to get into that scroll and you're looking and you're just like, Oh, I could never do any of that. Or i my work's not good enough. Or, you know, we start kind of thinking that, and I think getting away from that can really be helpful. I know in 2021, I took the month of June off from posting altogether. And I didn't even really get on social media. And it felt great. Like it felt really good. And I realized that what ha- was happening was I would go into the studio and it would be like, okay, I, I got to create something for Instagram today. Oh, I should have filmed that because that would have been a great video for Instagram today or whatever. And then when I reached that point, it was like, oh my goodness, no wonder I feel paralyzed. I've got to, I've got to back off of this. And it's still a struggle. I mean, I still have to deal with that. I mean, part of my job and what I'm doing is helping other artists. So I'm in there, I'm in the technology, I'm all part of that. But that is a great place to get to. And I love hearing you say that because to just really be able to like, I love creating and it's okay because it's for me and it doesn't really matter, you know, someone likes it or not. And that's the, really the point. There's lots of art out there that's phenomenal, but it's not my style and I don't particularly like it, but that doesn't make it any less valuable or any less amazing. So, and you've been as, as of the recording of this, you had told me that you've been kind of, you've stepped away from the social for a while and you've been very focused. And how has that helped you in your creative process? Well, I don't fall down the hole of, ooh, that's so pretty. Or, uh-huh. oh, maybe I should take that class. Exactly. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's, it's, um, it's given me more time. And instead of first thing in the morning, grabbing my phone, I now keep it across the room mm-hmm. and get up in the morning and I grab a book. Nice. You know, maybe I'll check the weather on my iPad, but usually I grab a book. 
mm-hmm. or I belong to two artist communities, well, three, you know, my makers tag. Um, and sometimes I'll look at tutorials or um, sure. that sort of thing. But um, it's, it's made it so that I don't have to think about an audience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, th- I think sometimes making art can really art that comes from here, you know, uh, has a lot to do with putting the audience aside, like with Ephraim, you know, put them aside, work from where you are without it's without any outside interference. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, when I, right now, I don't want to see really what a lot of other people are doing because I know there, there there's so many great artists out there, but I have so much going on in my head right now. I don't need anymore. And that's one of the things that, um, I think it's wonderful about, um, you know, Louise Fletcher. Have yes, you, I yeah, you know, uh-huh. yep. mm-hmm. um, I'm in her art tribe now. I just, I just joined her art tribe and limitations, such a big deal. Less is more. Mm-hmm. And if I can just, uh, whittle myself down to saying, okay, today I'm going to work with the, these magazines, this glue stick and this paper, or these sticks and this ink, you know, or whatever it is and push myself, push, push, push. Um, instead of like, Oh, I got to do this. And I got to do that. Cause I'm a little ADD, you know, <laughs> I'm with you on that. Yes. I'm just a little, and I'm hungry for, for learning new techniques. I'm still so hungry for it all the time. Um, but it ends up gelling, you know, I use, like, I was, I was looking at a video the other day, one of my art groups. And I thought, this is really awesome. But if I keep watching these, all of my work is going to look like hers. Right. So I, you know, I joined Louise and I'm, I'm looking at other things and I'm starting to bring other things in. And now it looks like me. I'm like, okay. Yeah. And that's a challenge. I think I I get that a lot. I'll have a lot of um, creatives ask, well, how do you find your style? How do you, how do you have your things look different? And I mean, and, and that said, I know people will say, oh, when I see your work, I know it's yours. You're just like, really? I don't, I don't know. Like, it's hard to really, it's hard for me to see that, I think. But I think it's just like you said, it's a matter of learn, but then just let those influences not be there and then just see what happens. And your work is not going to look like everybody else's because you aren't everybody else and you Mm -hmm. approach things differently. And I don't remember where I read it, if it was on your website or not, where you talked about how, you know, each of our hands are different and our minds are different. I may have that wrong. And so everything is different because we are different. All of us. Yeah. Tell my students that everyone's hand moves in a different way. Don't, you know, don't tell yourself you can't draw. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the mark that you make, they're, they're having, some of them have trouble understanding mark making mm-hmm. and, but I still make them do it <laughs> just yeah. a little bit, just a little bit. Sure. Yeah. Take a stick or a scrub brush or, oh, I found the coolest things today. An old, um, oh. old hair. <laughs> it's, a roll, it's a hair roller. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Mark making. Awesome. Oh my gosh. Do they even make those anymore? I can't even remember. I think my mom had those. Oh my gosh. I found that creative reuse space and then you can take the cover off and then my my mothers like to put their stuffed animals on springs and blast them into our Oh my gosh. Fantastic. That is awesome. Two, two amazing little tools right there. Yeah, right there. I bought a whole bag of them. (laughs) I love that. Well, I love the creative reuse center. I don't know if you have one there, but it's we just, don't, but I think oh. I was in just Austin's a very, very creative town. I don't live in a really super creative town. Um, I forget where I was traveling, whether it was Portland or it might've been somewhere else where they had it Maybe, as a uh, scrap, scrap, I think. Yeah. I think that's what it was. And you'd go in, it was yeah. all kinds of things. And yeah, I they think- had San Francisco as well. It's an awesome place. Yeah, I wish we had something like that around here. I mean, we go to Goodwill, but we don't always find great things at Goodwill because we don't we don't have something like that. But that's pretty cool. So, well, well then you come to Austin. There you go. I, there's another reason I need to come to Austin, and we will go. 
My family lives in Dallas. I don't know how far Austin is from Dallas, but it's about a, I think it's a couple hours. Oh, We're a couple hours uh, north. Oh. No, south. South. Okay. Yeah, that's not too yeah, bad. Not very far. Yeah. And then you yeah. could. You can stop in Waco and um, go to the Magnolia on the way. You know, we were going to do that on a trip. I forget it was a couple of years ago when my niece graduated and we were talking about going there. It was a little bit of a drive, but we were going to go to, um, where did we end up going? Where's the place where they do the, the, the run of the, the Longhorns? Where's that? <laughs> oh no. Yeah, I can't remember it. <laughs> I'm the most un-Texan <laughs> something but I know that's not it anyway yeah and it was beautiful we actually had a really great time but by the time we did all of that Waco was just a little bit too far for us to head to so we didn't end up going but but yeah so I, one day I will make it to Austin I will make it there. oh yeah bring an extra suitcase oh yes I'll have to do that for sure so. and 20 20 dollars in a suitcase and you're golden you're good awesome. for them. yeah yeah That'd be awesome. Yeah. But I hear it's, it's amazing. I hear Austin is amazing. I mean, and it is a creative hub. Like it's, it's just, there's so many artists and creatives there. So it'll be, we've been, we've been so happy that we moved here. I mean, San Francisco was, it was kind of, it was a city I loved. I really truly loved it for so many years, but then it became something other and the homeless situation was, Mm -hmm. it was dire. And we were right downtown and it was, you know, walk out your door and you didn't know right. if you were going to get spit on, which happened to me. That was the breaking point. Yeah. Wow. So we came here. We, we had never been here. We came for a weekend and bought a house. No and way. Wow. Another like, oh my God, we got to sell our condo. Oh, so, um, but my husband's a musician and it's a big music place oh, and um, got a wonderful group of guys he plays with good friends and slowly I'm, I'm meeting artists. Um, it's also a very young town that in my experience, we live in an, a young area. We're definitely the oldest people here, uh-huh. but um, we're in East Austin and there's a, but there's a lot happening here. We're about a mile and a half from downtown and nice. you know, yeah. it's, it's great, but it's also a place where I, I love my home and I, I like being in it. So Mm-hmm. And that's important. I mean, that's yeah. your, that's your, your home isn't just your house, you know? And yeah. And I can tell just, just you talking about it, that you're just really happy there. And you, you, your space, you said is a converted bedroom and there's a balcony on the room as well. Is that, did you yeah, say, I don't, yeah. See, can we see? Can you see my oh, little balcony? Oh, that is so nice. And I keep saying to my husband, maybe we should like just knock that wall out you know, and get some more space. Mm. And he's like, oh, this is so expensive. And, and then I think, yeah, but then I'll be losing light in this part of the room. Mm. Like, I don't know. I mean, I have a, a window here and I have the window there. Nice. And so I rarely have to turn a light on. I don't really work at night. I don't like the yeah. fake light. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's so cozy and I love my Persian. I mean, it's like, a, it's so wrapped and I just love this rug and it, it makes me feel like maybe I'm, I'm in London and oh, or yeah. somewhere else, you know, yeah. Be anywhere. yeah, well, it's important. I mean, I used to work in my dining room table. So when I got my small space, I was so thrilled and it's evolved over the years into, into different looks and function and everything. And I'm even thinking of, you know, some other things I might want to change in there, but I like being in there and I love being in there. And that's so important. So, well, let's touch, okay. a, little, let's touch a little bit about technology. So let's talk a little oh, bit about yeah. well, talk about the, the technology struggle for you has, I mean, I know you, you worked with me and through uh, Makers Tech U to get your website up, but you said um, some, I was reading some, uh, some things that you had said about that. And I want to make sure I get this right, because you were talking about um, the process of actually going through and building your website and how it was more than just creating the structure and the form and there's the website, but that you needed to think a little bit about more about who you are as an artist and what you wanted to share with the world. So tell, talk a little bit about that because that it, it is more than just, oh, let's just throw some pictures up there and an about page. It's really, how do you want to present yourself and your work to the world out there? Um, yeah, it actually started as a very terrifying experience because, um, oh, you know, I don't want to wreck it. This is not something I'm used to, but it, it became like a very, um, 
deep artwork. And, you know, it's like, it was constantly deciding. It took me forever because I was always playing with all the buttons and colors and, you know, mm -hmm. which probably was not the wisest thing in some ways for me because <laughs> it took so long and got me so confused, but I need my choices. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, just deciding what to say. Yeah. And, you know, you, I know you, you have a lot of really good um, prompts and things for, for writing about what, who you are and what you do. And I ended up having to do it on the fly as I was creating the website that worked the best for me. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, being able to tell my story and being able to tell it in sections, mm -hmm. um, being able to show my work in sections and I really needed a refresh. So, you know, this is good that we're doing this. You'll be hearing from me. <laughs> yep, I'm here for um, you. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, it's it was really important in solidifying in my mind who I am as an artist and what I do. Um, and what I love, right. Without being distracted. I only had, I had my limits, you know, I only had this screen mm -hmm. and so many tabs that I would let myself use. Smart. Um, I was going to put a store on and I changed my mind. I, mm -hmm. I'm not probably going to do that right now. I might do it with my hundred day project, um, pieces. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you know, I just, my work is the most important thing. Sure. And, um, and my website is, is the vehicle that I use to transport it. Um, I love um, that. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great way of putting it. And the nice thing is, is you don't have to have the shop until you're ready. And what I did a few years ago when I closed some of my part of my business was I'll just do a pop-up shop whenever I feel like it. Like in a hundred day project is a great vehicle for that because if you're you know working through the project and for those of you that aren't familiar with the hundred day project, it's a project that used to be in the spring, but it's now at least in 2022, mid-February, it starts and it's hundred days and it's free. You don't have to sign up. Basically you choose an action or a theme and you do that every day for hundred days, but it doesn't necessarily have to be art. There's lots of people that participate and do a whole lot of things. It may be that, you know, you try a new recipe or you just do some line drawings or it, it, take a photograph. It, it's not necessarily art, but it, a lot of people who do it are creatives and artists. And so you just commit to it for a hundred days and you post it on Instagram and you just give it a hashtag. So that's what the hundred day project is. And so we were talking a little bit about that. So um, since we were talking about that, we'll talk about your, what you're going to be doing for this year. But I think that's a great vehicle because if you're creating something that's tangible at the end, you could have, you know, anywhere from, you know, 50 to hundred of something. And I've done that where it's like, okay, now I have all of these, well, let's do a pop-up shop and then we'll sell them in the shop. And it's always, you know, been, it's done well because you end up with all of these things and you see that progression from the beginning and how it changes a little bit and evolves. And I think having, having chosen a theme or an action that's a little broad is not a bad thing because it doesn't pigeonhole you. Um, and you don't get bored as easily. So, so when we talk a little bit about what's coming up for you in the next six months or so, this would be one of those projects. So tell us a little bit about what you've decided you're going to do, even though it might change or it'll evolve. What is on, and I, um, what is on your mind for that? A hundred days of stripes. <laughs> I know. I, about, I had already asked Patty about it before and she told me, I was like, Oh, you're in the trust for it. You're getting, you're getting in character. You're like getting ready to go. So yeah. You know, I, I went to Goodwill the other day to get some painting things and um, a couple of them I really rather like, <laughs> but this is a painting smock. Yeah. I or, love it. It's a grandpa shirt, but um, yeah, a hundred days of stripes, all kinds of stripes, collage painted, um, image transferred, photographed. I'm finding stripes in places I never saw them before. Um, and I'm giving a lot of um, honor to the double yellow line down the middle of the road. I, it's <laughs> the the, the long, long forgotten, um, important, most important stripe. It's yeah, a life-saving stripe. That's, yeah. that's it, that's it. Wow. <laughs> well, it'll be interesting to follow along and see how, how it changes or how it develops and where you go with that. And, and I think that's a, that's definitely 
something that you could tie in, like you said, with so many different mediums, like it could be the photography, the transfer, the collage, the painting. There's so many different things that you could do fabric even. I mean, there's just so many. Yeah. Things with that. Yeah. 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 I'm pretty excited about it. I think that I will actually have more than a hundred. I'm, oh. I'm really getting into it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that, that'll be fun. So anybody out there looking for a fun thing to look at, check out people doing the hundred day project because yeah, it, it's fun to follow along too. When you, you find people that are doing something that you're really interested in, it'll be fun to watch the stripes evolve. And are you going to post to Instagram? Are you going to, Oh yes. You? Okay, good. Yeah. We'll get to see. So I'll be, I'll be starting again and um, yeah, and I'll be posting on Instagram and good. using my Planoly and my other, you know, tech, my, my other tech fun thing that I love. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. Keeps me, keeps me moving. Yeah. And it gives you, I don't know it. I, I like the project too, because it does get something to focus on. And it, sometimes I really just need direction. Like I need something where I'm like, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm working on rather than like, Oh, what do I want to do today? And sometimes I'm like that, but a lot of times I do much better if I'm focused and I have a purpose or I have a, a theme, you know, something specific that I am going to be trying to work on. So well, let's deviate just a little from the art part and let's talk about what fun activity comes second to creating into your art. And I know it's your family. So tell us about mm -hmm. that. Yes, it is my family. Um, well, I've got, I, I say four daughters, but you know, it's two and two and they're all wonderful and um, spending time with them is precious. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go to Ireland this year and see um, my husband's oldest is in grad school there. Um, I love spending time with my grandkids. Uh, they are all creatives. And how and many do you have? Four. I have two boys, um, 11 and eight, and two girls. One just turned six, and it was a big deal. It was a big birthday. She cried and cried. She just did not want to be six. She really liked being five, but she's okay now. She's She's... The most, I think she's the most creative of all four. She wow. will draw all day. Wow. Um, and then her little sister is right behind her. She loves it. They, I make them all art journals. Mm. And it's music to my ears when they need a new one. Awesome. Um, maybe I need a new art journal. Okay. <laughs> I love that. That's great. What a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they, you know, I use sometimes uh, their work in my work. Like I've done stripes with cutting up some of their drawings. I hope it's okay, but I just, you know, it's not gonna do any, it's not gonna do any good sitting in a drawer. I wanna use their work. So um, yeah, and I just, I, I love buying them crazy art supplies. They're kind of, yeah, <laughs> I've turned them into art supply uh, junkies, so. And do your daughters but, also create? Are they creative as well? Um, <laughs> My, the one in Ireland is a very good artist. She's uh, much like my husband, very quiet and um, very good writer mm -hmm. and really a, a wonderful student of life. I have to say that she's super creative. Um, her younger sister does a lot of art too, and she's really into plants. Um, and then my, my oldest is incredibly creative with like she'll take a piece of furniture and you know completely redo it wow. um she's done so many things in her house and you would never know that they were homemade or you know home done sure. um and and she's an amazing mom and then um Allie uh, loves to create with the girls and my youngest daughter she likes to just get down there and create with the girls she's oh mom I'm not really an artist she is Mm, mm -hmm. she is and you know you can tell somebody like the way the way they do their house or the way they put an outfit together and you know they just they just got that but um I also remember being a mom when your kids are younger it's hard enough to get eight hours sleep <laughs> let alone you take, know take time to create yeah sure. yeah my kids were much older before I started you know getting into mm -hmm. to this so it's, it's so fun just watching all of them evolve. Yeah. Um, 
but I'm just, I'm so proud of all of them. They're just beautiful girls. Wonderful. And my husband is also very creative. He's well, he's right. So yeah, he writes and he plays music and, you know, he's a more avid reader, I think than I am, but he's wow. written like a tome about his mother, um, taking stories from her life and, and wow. read down them. So he's, he's a real creative person too. So I just love my yeah. family. You're filled, your whole life is filled with that. That's amazing. And I, that's, it's so great though, that you, that they do have that interest because there is that, you know, you love art and they're the, the commonality there. And I mean, I'm sure when you go shopping or you just do any, it, there's always that element there of the creativeness and the, Ooh, we could do with that and what we could do with that. And then just bringing y'all together and, and having time together to be able to create. So well, Patty, it has been such a joy talking with you and learning more about you and your art and your your um, extra work that you're doing with the kids and your family. And I just really appreciate you taking the time to spend time with us. And um, is there anything you want to share, anything other than the 100 Day Project, which we talked about that's coming up? Um, anything you want to share with any of the viewers or listeners? Anything you got cooking or just pretty much follow along on the 100 Day Project? Yeah, follow along and... Um you know, and reach out if anybody has questions, you know, by all means, reach out. Um, I love to talk to other artists and meet other artists. And um, I also, you know, I have, we, we all have that time where we close the doors, like, leave me alone. I want to be alone. Mm -hmm. But there's also that time where yeah. we just love exchanging ideas and just um, being with other creatives. So I don't know, and even if you're not creative and you want to be creative or whatever. Um, and you are such a wonderful interviewer. Oh, thank you. I'm nervous every Hi. single time because this is so new to me is doing this. And I can't remember how many I've done so far, five, six, maybe you're six or seven. And once I get started, I really enjoy it, but it, I do get nervous because it's, I mean, not only are we doing video, <laughs> but we're, you know, we're doing the audio, but we're also doing video. So, but, um, but it's so much fun and I've learned so much more about, um, the creatives and the artists that I've spoken to and learned a little bit more about them. Like, I really didn't know that you had such a, a deep background in writing and which is such a huge struggle for me. I'm so just not confident. Oh my gosh, you're good. And you're I'm just like, ah, but, um, but just to learn all of the different things, it's been, it's been really wonderful. So I appreciate the feedback because I'm always nervous every time I start doing an interview, but. Um, oh yeah. You should have your own talk show. Oh my goodness. Well, <laughs> Put them on YouTube or anything? Um, they are on YouTube. Yep. They're on the blog. Oh, they're on YouTube. Yeah. And then we do an audio version for like, just for listening. So if anyone wants to listen to it, like a podcast, they can do that as well. So yeah. You're amazing. You, oh, you just, Patty, thank you. I'm, I'm so glad you, you fell into my life somehow. So I love here that. we are. Yeah. I that happens. You've and definitely and I have fall into your life literally when I come to visit Austin I know I've been talking about it but it's just I've got to because there's some other artists that I've met through teaching and all that are in there in in Austin so it's like I, I've got to get there so oh, come in spring don't don't come in August it's so oh, hot oh no 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah do that. If I'm leaving Florida in August I'm not going to Texas <laughs> yeah no no yeah. but um yeah Texas is really wonderful and um yeah, we, we went to uh, Marfa uh, and Alpine in October. Mm -hmm. That was a really nice trip. I don't know if you've heard about mm -hmm. Mar Marfa is an artist community started by Donald Judd, I think is his name, an artist, I think in the 60s or 70s, I think it was the 70s. Mm -hmm. And um, you can, there's a place called El Cosmico, you can rent like a vintage um, trailer and stay. <laughs> there because I'm not a camper we did not do that we stayed in a hotel in Alpine but yeah. tons and tons of galleries and um good food and it's out in the middle of west Texas nowhere oh, like, like towards, Lubbock? towards Lubbock area or no it's it's almost to Mexico it's oh, wow. uh, like El Paso area? It's, it's uh southwest okay wow. and it's near Big Bend National Park which is okay I think they said it's the biggest and probably most undervisited national park in the country. Wow. And it's, it's beautiful. Even if you just drive through it, it's beautiful. And um, yeah. And, and there's um, just, yeah, I would definitely 
stop in Marfa drive through to Valentine where they have, you know, the, have you ever seen that picture of the Prada store in the desert? I'm not sure. I have to send it to you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's like a, it's an art installation oh. and it's where, um, Marfa's where they filmed the, the movie giant with uh, Elizabeth Taylor and, um, James Dean. Okay. So you can stay in a hotel and stay in the room that she stayed in. I mean, it's, it's really kind of a fun place, but it is out in the middle of nowhere. You can fly into Midway or El Paso and it's oh, about okay. That's from it. there. But wow. I realized that people in Texas think nothing of driving five, six, seven hours to go somewhere. Well, it takes they just, a long time to get, to get to most yeah. places. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's a big state. Yeah. Yeah. We, we discovered a new, a little a beach community that, cause we, we like to do a lot of um, week trips around Florida and we have different places we like to go. We discovered a new one that's in the panhandle, which is towards Alabama. And it's about seven hours and my limit five to six. And so it's worth it, but man, it's just such a long drive to get there. It's like, Oh, so I'm, I'm not great on those long road trips, but, uh, but I can get on an airplane and fly. So that's no problem, but yeah. Yeah. Maybe one day I'll make it there. So, but, all right. Yeah. Dear, thank you so much again for um, chatting with us today. And again, if anybody has any questions and they want to reach out to Patty, there will be information in the blog post on how to reach out to her and contact her and give her a shout out and follow along on her stripes as she goes through the 100 Day Project this year. So thanks, Patty. Thank you so much, Robin Marie, yeah. for everything. Yep. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. You Bye. Are you ready to turn overwhelm into something manageable? Listen, I know you have a dream for your creative business, but you know it takes learning technology to make that happen. So stop wasting piecing it all together with YouTube videos that end up confusing you even more. Let me help you make learning and mastering the tech easy and fun so you can spend more time focused on your art passion. Take a look at Makers Tech U. Investing in yourself is the best investment you'll ever make. So check it out at makerstechu.com forward slash join. I look forward to seeing you there.